My name is Katherine Shep, and I'm a research assistant at the Blink Lab here at the University of Alberta. Uh, I recently completed my master's under the co-supervision of Dr. Jacqueline Hebert from the Faculty of Medicine and Dr. Jason Carey from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So I want you to try and imagine holding someone's hand when you don't know how hard you're holding it. Imagine the, the subsequent hesitation and isolation that you feel from that. This is actually something that's faced uh, by many amputees. Um, this amputation might be the result of a motor vehicle collision or a farming incident or even complications from a disease. And typically a person will wear a prosthetic arm to replace some of that lost functionality. Recent advances in robotic technology have come a long way to the point where some can move very similar to a normal human hand. The problem is that no commercial system offers any type of sensory feedback. And this means the person doesn't know if they're holding an object, how hard they're squeezing it, or where their arm is in space. So imagine again trying to hold a delicate object, say an egg, and you don't know how hard you're holding it. It'd be very easy to imagine that you could crush it or let it slip through your fingers. So here in the Blink Lab, we're very fortunate to capitalize on a surgery called targeted sensory re -innervation. Essentially what happens is surgeons go in and they take the nerves that used to go to the hand responsible for touch, and then they transplant those to skin sites on what's left of the person's arm. So now as the person is touched on that part of their arm, they feel as if they're being touched on their missing hand. We can harness that channel of information using something called a tactor. Uh, essentially it's a small pushing device that you mount non-invasively over top of that skin site so that as their hand measures a force, it presses on their arm and they get that indication of grasping strength. The problem with these systems is that they're very difficult to access. So none are available commercially and those that have been developed for research are either extremely expensive or completely unavailable. And this really limits how many institutions around the world can actually perform research in this important area. So to address this problem, we have developed our own tactor system uh, for a fraction of the cost. We're focusing on keeping the device design accessible and inexpensive, and hope to release the design open source. So anyone around the world with access to a 3D printer um, and, and the internet can manufacture and assemble the system himself. So here you can see our design that I've integrated onto a commercial prosthetic arm. So there's three main components. There's the sensors on the fingertips, the electronics within the forearm, and then the tactor devices themselves. So as I apply force to the fingertip, you'll see that the tactor is actually moving, and this would be applying a force to the person's arm. We were very fortunate to have a volunteer with an amputation come into our lab and test out the system. Um, he gave us some really useful insight into improvements that we can make, and at the end of the day we asked, would you want this integrated onto your daily prosthesis? And his response was five out of five. So that was very reassuring, and in the future we do hope to expand to a larger pool of volunteers as well as look at take-home trials so you can see how our system functions during normal tasks of daily living. So to conclude, we have developed a tactor system uh, for a fraction of the cost of similar designs. And in this way we really hope to get sensory feedback off of a lab bench and onto the prosthetic arms of those in need. We really hope to allow amputees to uh, reconnect with the world around them and re-establish an intuitive sense of touch. Mm -hmm.